OK, before. Let's just do this. When we were doing this. These are expressions. Uh, these are expressions. 6 plus 5i times 3 plus 7i. That's an expression. The factoring we did last week, we did on expressions. You don't solve expressions. You just follow the directions, do whatever you're asked to do. But now we have stuff on the left, I, technical jargon there, stuff on the left equals stuff on the right. That's an equation. We're actually going to be solving for the variable, finding out what it equals. So let's start. The first thing I have to do is check. Well, actually, I'm going to wait. The first thing I have to do is I have to put a zero over here. I can't have a 24. I'm going to, to make it a zero by subtracting 24. Of course, I have to do the same exact thing to both sides of the equation at the same time. So let's subtract 24 and subtract 24. And what that gives me is b squared plus 5b minus 24 equals 0. Now this is a case where I have a leading coefficient of 1, so I can use my favorite easier method here of factoring. And then what I have to do is take the constant at the end, negative 24, and factor this into factor pairs so I can look for a factor pair that adds up to the middle number. All right, well, let's do that. Um, negative 1 times positive 24, negative 2 times positive 12, negative 3 times positive 8, negative 4 times positive 6. Yeah, and then, and then it flips and starts going back the other way. So also 1 times negative 24, and two times negative 12, and three times negative eight, and four times negative six. Um, I need two of these that will add up to positive five, and that's going to be negative three plus eight equals five. So negative three and positive eight are the numbers I'm going to be using in my factors. So I come up here and I take B squared and I separate it into B and B. And then I take my two numbers. Negative three becomes minus three and positive eight becomes plus eight. Now that was all we did for factoring but the equals zero means I'm going to actually continue on. And so here are some additional steps that you do when you um, are solving a quadratic equation. You factor it, and then you set each factor equal to zero. B minus three equals zero. B plus eight equals zero. Then you solve each of these little equations. Add three to both sides here on the left, and I get B equals positive three and subtract eight 
from both sides over here on the right, and I'll get B equals negative eight. And then you can check your answers. And how you would do that is how you would normally, let's do one of them, but I really haven't got time right now. Here's the original equation. Um, let's choose negative eight because it's harder to work with a negative number. Put the negative eight in parentheses and square it. Plus five times negative eight. This is going to be what? Eight minus three is five. So this should be minus 24. Ah, oh, that's what's wrong. Negative 24. No, but this is going to be positive 24. All right, I know that's right. So what am I doing? That's, oh, I know what I'm doing. Never mind. Negative eight, <laughs> negative eight squared is positive 64. Plus five times negative eight is negative 40 equals 24, equals 24. 64 plus negative 40 is the same thing as 64 minus 40, and that is 24. 24 does equal itself, so that's a true statement. And what that means to me is that negative eight equals B. It's one of the numbers that equals the variable that this quadratic equation is written in. And I could do the other. Okay, so these are the extra steps you go to when you solve a quadratic equation. Well, that was fun. Let's do it some more. Here, I have to have a zero on the right. So I am going to subtract 8w from both sides of the equation. And so I will have w squared minus 8w plus 16 equals zero. Notice I take the time to write this in descending order. And then there's a one leading coefficient. Don't lose your equals zero. I split apart the w squared into w and w, and then I factor positive 16 into two numbers that add up to negative 8. 1 times 16, 2 times 8, 3, no, but 4 times 4. There you go. But we need the negative version. Negative 1 times negative 16, negative 2 times negative 8, negative 4 times negative 4. And yes, negative four plus negative four equals negative eight. So I'm going to have W minus four and W minus four. Well, they're the same thing, right? W minus four equals zero. W minus four equals zero. You know I'll have the same answer for both of them because they're exactly the same equation. So when I add four to both sides of the equation, I get W equals four and W equals four. Now let's talk. 
over here the solutions to my equation were three and negative eight. If you want to call that normal, it's normal for a quadratic equation to have two solutions, not just one. This is a little unusual. We would say it has one solution. It being the quadratic equation, one solution occurring OCC, U, R, I, N, G, occurring twice. So in a way that almost counts as two because it occurs twice. So while in the answer box, I would only put four, the fact that it occurs twice is something that we call multiplicity two. Up here, three occurred only once. Negative eight occurred only once. Each of these each solution has multiplicity one. Multiplicity one. Why is that important? It will be later. I'm just getting you used to the language. There's something else that's going to be very important later, and that is, these are, are what we would call integers, right? They're normal kind of numbers. They're real numbers, more to the point. Um, but integers, since integers can also be written as fractions, they're called real rational solutions to the equation. They're in the real number system. They're rational numbers. They can be made into fractions. And they're solutions to the equation. And there are two of them. Two real rational solutions. And this, this is an integer, so it can be made into a fraction. So fractions and integers are part of what we call the rational number system. So here we have a real rational solution. There's one real rational solution. to this equation. Again, I'm getting you used to this. You're going to you're going to be hearing a lot. You're going to be hearing a lot. Real rational, real irrational, uh, complex conjugate, all of that. OK, this is just another one. You can do that. Let's do this. This is a little bit different. 27C squared minus 3C. I have to follow the zero principle before I do anything else. So I'm going to subtract 3C from both sides of the equation. And what that gives me is 
27c squared minus 3c equals 0. Now here I have a quadratic binomial throwing a little um, um, vocab at you because it's necessary or I wouldn't. Each of these terms has a 3 and a C. 27 is 3 times 9 times C times C for the C squared minus 3C times 1 equals 0. And I am going to pull out the GCF. 3C, just like with factoring, you pull out your GCF. And then you write the leftovers. 9C minus 1 equals 0. Now we're done with the factoring. We're going to solve now. So each factor, a factor, here's an example, example of a factor. What about the number six? Six, there's not a six in there, so it has nothing to do with that problem. But six is convenient because it does not appear over there. Six equals one times six and two times three, and then there are the negative ones. One and six are factors of six because when you multiply them together, you get six. And two and three are factors of six because when you multiply them together, two and three, you get six. When I multiply three C and nine C minus one together, I get 27 C squared minus three C. That makes three C a factor of 27 C squared minus three C. And that makes nine C minus one a factor of 27 C squared minus three C. I set each factor equal to zero. 3C equals zero. 9C minus one equals zero. Cool. I solve for C over here on the left. Divide both sides by three. I'll get C equals zero because if you divide zero by three, you get zero. Over here, this is gonna be a little more work to solve. I'm going to add one to both sides of the equation. That'll be nine C equals one. Then I divide by nine and I divide by nine. So I get C equals one ninth. So my solutions to this equation, 27 C squared equals three C R arg. Oh, right. Well, I thought I was on blue. Oh well, zero and one ninth. These are both real numbers. One ninth is rational. And actually, we did have zero over three. That's a fraction, temporarily. So both of these are real rational solutions of the equation. And this is to know in the near future, very near future. And this is something we need right now. Discussion about this. 
there might be a temptation to divide both sides by 3C. Don't do it, don't do it. Honor the zero principle first and then pull out a GCF. Okay. Oh boy, we get to do U substitution. I know that because four is two times two. And look at this, we're gonna have one, two, three, four solutions. They're real and rational, but there are four of them. That's because the highest power is four. You're guaranteed to have four solutions if the highest power is four. You're guaranteed to have at most two solutions if the highest power is two. You might have one. You might You're not have any. Me. I'm sorry. You're killing me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's a lot to learn in college algebra. But anyway, we're going to use U substitution before we do anything else. So U equals X squared. That's the way we always do it. And then U squared equals X squared squared, which is X to the fourth, which means I can rewrite this temporarily as a quadratic equation. So I'll have U squared minus 82 U plus 81 equals zero. And you get to learn something new today. Well, you're going to learn a lot. It's not new. Okay. Notice that the leading coefficient is one. So I can just do this. First, I concentrate on factoring. And I want to factor 81 into two numbers that add up to negative 82. And if I write positive 81 as negative one times negative 81, then notice that negative one plus negative 81 equals negative 82. So you don't always have to make the lists of numbers if you can see it right off the bat. So we're going to have a U and a U and a minus one and a minus 81. Okay. Now, what does u equal? It equals x squared. u equals x squared. I have a u here and a u here. I don't have any u squareds, which was the whole idea. To factor a quadratic equation is easier than to factor a quartic equation. So now I'm going to have x squared minus 1 times x squared minus 81 equals 0. I'm actually not done factoring, but let's go ahead and set these equal to 0. x squared minus 1 equals zero, x squared minus 81 equals zero because that's what you do, right? You set each factor equal to zero. But then you might discover, oh my gosh, golly, this is the difference of two perfect squares. So x squared minus one, one is one times one. So they're both perfect squares. This is x squared 
minus one squared equals zero. So this factors into X. Well, let me put the, let me do it this way. Separate the X into X and X. Separate one squared into one and one, then put a plus in the middle of the first one and a minus in the middle of the second one. And I have, I don't have room. So we're going to have to move this over. I don't have room to write my equals zero, so I'm going to do this. <coughs> okay. Now the same thing is true for x squared minus 81. 81 equals nine squared. So this is x squared minus nine squared equals zero. So boom, 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 boom. X squared is x times x. Nine squared is nine and nine. And I put a plus in front of one and a minus in front of the other equals zero. Well, now I set both of these factors equal to zero and solve, and I set both of these factors equal to zero and solve, so I don't need those parentheses now. I will have <clears throat> x plus one equals zero. Whoop, whoop, whoop x plus 1 equals 0, x minus 1 equals 0, x plus 9 equals 0, x minus 9 equals 0. Starting on the left, x plus 1 equals 0. I subtract 1 from both sides. I'll have x equals negative 1. x minus 1 equals 0. I add 1 to both sides. I'll have x equals positive 1. Subtract 9, subtract 9. X equals negative 9. Add 9, add 9. X equals positive 9. And let's just see if this matches their answers. It does. So, these are all numbers, they're integers, which means they're also rational. These are four, four real rational solutions to the equation. Solu, <clears throat> solutions. To the equation and those numbers are negative 1 and positive 1 and negative 9 and positive 9 or you could write them in order as they fall on the number line and you could do that also but let's go over what we did as soon as i see 4 is 2 times 2 i use u substitution it's just a reflex. Ah, uh, use substitution. So I get to rewrite this as um, 
um, a, a quadratic, and I know how to factor quadratics. If I don't know anything else, I know how to factor quadratics. So I factor the quadratic and I set each, well, I resubstitute and then I set each factor equal to zero. I notice that each factor is a difference of squares, perfect squares. So I continue to factor. And then I set each of these factors equal to zero. And I solve each of these four little equations and I get four answers, solutions. And there you go. When you see something like that, factor, factor by GCF. You know that four goes into 25 times, right? Right. Oh, there is no X over here. Um, yeah, go back here. I pull four out to the front. Now notice that I have two factors here, but setting four equal to zero makes no sense. How can you make a four into a zero? It's not four X equals zero, it's just four. It's not gonna do any good. So you can just ignore four or you can do something that only an equation will let you do. And that is do the same thing to both sides of the equation. I could never do this if all I was doing was factoring. No, but I am going to divide by four on both sides of the equation. If there were an X there, I would have to set it equal to zero and solve for X. There is no X there. It's just a number, it's just a constant. So I'm going to divide it out and get it out of the way. You can do it. Or you can just leave four over to the side and not think about it because you're not gonna be able to turn a four into a zero. So it's of no use to you. X is all that matters. Okay. Now that we've got that straight, I am going to be left with x squared minus five equals zero. This is not a perfect square. We're gonna have to learn a new method of solving equations. Here it is. This is, well, it's not new. You have had it before, but maybe it was a number of years ago. Or maybe it was just last semester. The square root method of solving quadratic equations. I'm not gonna write all that, but it's called the square root method. Here's what you do.
x squared equals 5. Now watch carefully. I'm going to take the square root of both sides of the equation, but there's something else I have to do. And that is give you a new symbol or one you haven't seen in a while, the plus minus. Okay, the square root of x squared is x and the square root of five won't break down. So the answer is plus or minus the square root of five. Now here's what that means for the answer box. Negative the square root of five, comma, positive the square root of five. Now, before you say, why do you stick a plus minus, I'm going to show you. Let's look at this example. X squared minus nine equals zero. Well, this is x squared minus three squared equals zero. Parentheses, parentheses equals zero. X, x, three, three plus minus. You set each factor equal to zero. Notice that x equals negative 3 and x equals positive 3. Which is the same thing as plus or minus 3. You have to have the two answers. Now, what if I had come over here and used the square root method instead? X squared equals nine. Take the square root of both sides. You've got to compensate for the fact you're not going to your answer is not going to be X equals three. What happened to the negative three? That's why we put the plus minus in front. Over here we factored by the difference of two squares. We got two answers. You can't work the same problem with two different methods and get a different number of answers. So if you're going to use the square root method, you have to put a plus minus in front of that square root. And you're going to see that a lot today. Or again. OK, so that's why. That's why we did that.
OK, you are going to see that again. Let me see if I can find a place. Here, let's do this one. Let's do this one. And then we'll go back. So a four and two, I'm going to use u squared, uh, u substitution. u equals x squared, and u squared equals x squared squared, which is x to the fourth. So I will have u squared minus 12u plus 27 equals 0. And where the 1 is the leading coefficient, all I have to do is this. u, u, and then I factor 27 1 times 27, 2, no, but 3 times 9, 4, no, 5, no, 6, no, 7, no, 8, no. Really? All right. And then that's 3 times 3. So I guess these are the only two factors I have. And then this starts to break down, I mean, start going the other way. OK, and negative 1 times negative 27 because 27 is positive and negative 3 times negative 9 and negative 3 plus negative 9 is negative 12. All right, so we're going to use minus 3 and minus 9. Now, we're going to use slightly different steps here because I'm going to be using the square root method. u minus 3 equals 0. u minus 9 equals 0. I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So I'll have u equals 3. And then I'm going to add 9 to both sides. So I'll have u equals 9. Now I have to resubstitute x squared equals 3. x squared equals 9. I'm going to use the square root method. So the square root of x squared equals plus or minus the square root of 3. The square root of x squared equals plus or minus the square root of 9. So x equals plus minus the square root of 3, x equals plus minus 3. What does that mean? That means x equals negative the square root of 3, x equals positive the square root of 3, x equals negative 3, and x equals positive 3. So using the square root method, negative the square root of 3, positive the square root of 3, negative 3, positive 3. You're going to have four solutions if the highest power is 4. These have different names. Negative 3 and 3 are real rational solutions. So you have two 
real, comma, rational, solutions to the equation. On the other hand, negative the square root of three and positive the square root of three are two real, they're real numbers, they're in the real number system, two real irrational solutions to the equation. Irrational means that no matter how hard you try, you will never find a way to make them into fractions. They have a decimal expansion that goes on forever, and no amount of math fracking will ever work for the square root of three, or negative the square root of three. And that's just the way it is. So see, the square root method can shorten the amount of work you have to do. And that can be pretty nice. All things considered. OK, let's. Let's do this one because we're going to have to use um, grouping. So let's do this. I use the zero principle, minus 15 and minus 15. So that I have 6x squared plus x minus 15 equals zero. Now, a three goes into both of these, but not into that. There's a one here. Okay, my A is six, my B is one, my C is negative 15. I'm going to multiply A times C. I have to use AC or some other method. When um, um, the number in front of the x squared is not one, positive one. So there's no easy way out. So a times c is going to be six times negative 15, and that will be negative 90. All right, so now I have to factor negative 90. Negative 90 equals negative 1 times 90. Negative 2 times 45. Negative 3 times 30. Negative 4. I don't think so. Let's let's use the calculator. OK, I'm going to go to y equals I'm going to say. Well, well, let's just do 90, 90 divided by X and then second graph. So here we go. This is the easy way to do it Four. no four won't work. Look at I've got a decimal over there. But five, let's get rid of the four. Negative five times 18. And negative six times 15. And you go down, down. No, no. See, they have decimals over here. We ignore those. Nine times 10, duh. 
negative 9 times 10, and negative 9 plus 10 is positive 1. Seems to me that's pretty obvious, but I forgot about it. Okay, now 6x squared minus 9x plus 10x minus 15 equals 0. If you don't write equals 0 every time, you could forget. Now we're going to do of uh, uh, grouping. And what I have to do, I'm going to make this a little longer. This is 2 times 3 times x times x minus 3 times 3 times x plus 2 times 5 times x minus 3 times 5. So we can see what our GCFs are. Our GCF, each of these first terms, that is terms in the first set of parentheses, has a three and, <coughs> and a three and an X and an X. So three X is the GCF. And what I'm left with, I have a two left and I have an X left, so I'll have two X minus and there's only one lonely little three right there. Plus. Each of these terms in the second set of parentheses has a five. I didn't want to do that. Five. Five times two X minus three. Look at this, I forgot my zero. Equals zero equals zero. Now, each of these, uh, of the left and the right side of the plus sign, they both have an X minus three. So two X minus three is my GCF times three X plus five. equals zero. Now, because I'm solving an equation, I set each factor equal to zero. Cute. I add three to both sides. Back on the left, I add three to both sides. So I have two X equals three, and then I divide by two and I divide by two. X equals three over two. And on the right-hand side where I have three X plus five equals zero, I subtract 5 and subtract 5 from both sides of the equation. That leaves me with 3x equals negative 5. And then divide by 3 and divide by 3. x equals negative 5 thirds. Let's see if that's right. Please, please, please. Negative 5 thirds and 3 over 2. Yes. So sometimes you do have to use grouping. OK. 
Okay, let's great. Super. All right. We have factored. Now we're going to start something else. Let's take a five minute break. <laughs> 